to Hockenheim for the final European round of the International Touring Car Championship. We're back in Germany, this time on the full Grand Prix circuit of the Hockenheim Ring. And for the first time this season, Mercedes driver Bernd Schneider is leading the championship by just two points. But Opel's Manuel Reuter, after a run of bad luck, is determined to retake the lead here in the black Opel that scored in 16 of the 20 races so far, and he's qualified third fastest. There's a yellow Opel on pole position, Klaus Ludwig's. Ludwig missed the last two races with a kidney problem, but he's qualified a fifth of a second ahead of Nicola Larini's Alfa Romeo. On the second row with Reuter is Scotland's Dario Franchitti, fourth fastest qualifier, and he's still in with a shout for the title after scoring well in the last six races. But the other Brit, Oliver Gavin, isn't here. After several unhappy races recently, Opel have dropped him for this race. Le Mans winner Yannick Dalmes is in his car. And as always at Hockenheim, those big open grandstands are absolutely packed as the Mercedes pace car pulls off. The field comes round on the rolling start for lap one. They come out of the final curve and onto the start finish straight. The lights go green and they're away. And Ludwig on the inside of the yellow car. It's Larini on the outside in the Alpha. Dario Franchitti looking for a gap between them. But Ludwig takes the lead. It's Ludwig in front. And off on the outside goes Nicola Marini. Dario Franchitti follows him. Marini's back on the road. So is Franchitti. A huge cloud of dust, but they're all through that first corner somehow. Ludwig then has the lead. Reuter in the black opal in second place. Uwe Altsen's opal is third. Larini is up in fourth place despite that moment. Bert Schneider just behind him is fifth with Tarkini coming through on the inside of Schneider as they go into the first tight chicane. It's Opal's one, two, three. It's Alfa Romeo's four and five. It's Mercedes six and seven. A lot of dust on the circuit. Somebody ran over the apex at the exit to that first chicane, but they all seem to be safely through. And already they're on the way to the second chicane, the chicane out there in the forest at the Ostkerber. And as they come storming through out of that chicane, still the three Opals ahead of the two Alphas, all the rest of the queue streaming through. And one of the Mercedes Mercedes gets very wrong, leaves his braking too late, runs over the chicane, gets back onto the circuit once more. But let's look at that start line incident with Nicola Larini going wide, Dario Franchitti following in his dust. Larini gets back onto the circuit almost without losing a place. But Dario Franchitti has lost a lot of places. He's well down. We've got yellow flags again. And it's Sandy Grau off, Jason Watt off. Sandy Grau seems to have restarted, but Jason Watt's white alpha is well and truly in the gravel. The marshals go to his aid, but it looks as though his race is run. And still, Ludwig leads from Reuter. Altsen is third. Then it's Larini and Tarkini, Schneider and Magnussen in the two Mercedes. And of course, Schneider, in order to retain his championship lead, will be very keen to get ahead of Reuter. We see once more Grau and Jason Watt waltzing sideways off the circuit. And another Alpha's gone off. It's the orange car of Michael Bartels spinning in the middle of the Ostkerber chicane. It's always the way here at Hockenheim, these long straights punctuated by three very tight chicanes. They get very slippery, they catch a lot of people out. Ludwig, Reuter, Altsen, the leading trio, Larini and Tarkini in the two Alphas as they come now down the long straight, which will lead them back into the stadium section. Yellow, black and yellow, that's the opal sandwich ahead of the red and white Alpha of Larini and the dark red Alpha of Tarkini. And meanwhile, Dario Franchitti and Van Ommen, as you see from the caption, running very close indeed in 13th and 14th places. Battles going on all the way down the circuit, but these three Opals seem to have the pace of the rest of the field. And side by side between Jan Magnussen and JJ Leto, they're so close, I don't know how they didn't touch. Magnussen fights back in the white Mercedes, tries to go back again, and Hans Stuck, Leto's teammate, is now coming on the inside of Magnussen. Can he get through on that left? under the sax curver he does both the keki rosberg opals get past jan magnuson's white mercedes in a very very crowded few hundred yards and magnuson now closing up on stuck under braking 
I don't know how they didn't collide under braking for the stadium. Just look at Leto go so close to Magnussen, but he gets through, and as Magnussen tries to fight back, Stuck sitting behind in the third of those three cars, reckons he's got an opportunity. He dives to the left, goes very late on the brakes, and just squeezes Jan Magnussen out. Magnussen stays there on the outside of the circuit, but there's not as much grip there, and the Opel has the inside line, Stuck is through. Back with the leaders, still yellow Opel leads black Opel, Ludwig leads Reuter, and now here's the battle for 10th place, Alessandro Nanini, Fisichella and Dalmas very close, and Nanini is, oh, hit very hard from behind there, Fisichella's gone through, where's Dalmas gone? Dalmas is off, Dalmas has lost his bonnet, and I don't quite know what happened there, but it was quite clear. Now we see Fisichella going off. It was quite clear that uh, Nanini was hit pretty hard, apparently by Fisichella. Here's a replay. Nanini in the white alpha. Fisichella in the red alpha is hit by Dalmas in the white and blue opal. Off goes the opal's bonnet, and then Fisichella and Nanini collide side by side. Fisichella squeezes through, Dalmas goes off, and we see it from the front now. And there is the Opal hitting the red Alpha. The Opal's bonnet goes, and then the two Alphas collide as well. And how that wasn't a much worse accident, I will never know. But out of it all, with Fisichella also going off, Nanini seems to have come through comparatively unscathed. Now, as the three Opals start their final lap, Ludwig leads Reuter, leads Altson. And remember, Reuter in the black car in the middle of this Opal sandwich is the man who's trying to get back the lead in the championship and I would think that the Opal team manager Peter Floor will probably tell uh, Klaus Ludwig that he ought to just move neatly out of the way on this final lap and let Manuel Reuter win the race because Opal want to get the championship for him and his championship rival Bernd Schneider is coming into the pits the championship leader is coming into the pits on the final lap that must be something terminally wrong for Schneider to decide he can't coax that Mercedes to the finish. And still Klaus Ludwig is ahead. Manuel Reuter sitting behind him with Uwe Altsen in third place with a grandstand view. And they're coming up to lap Massanon Sakia in his Opel and Gianni Gudici, the two uh, slowest Opals at the back of the field, the three quickest Opals reeling them in on this final lap and Ludwig, Reuter and Altsen still in the same order. Yellow, black, yellow, with the fourth and fifth Alphas not very far behind. And as Sakia uh, tries to keep out of the way, Reuter is waiting for an opportunity to go past Ludwig. Surely they will have told Ludwig to pull over and let Reuter go through. But as they come down, there is Ludwig pulling out of the slipstream, going past the two slower Opals, with Reuter and Altsen following him through. Sakia and Gadici having their own little battle behind, but they come into the stadium for the last time, and Ludwig is still clearly the leader. Ludwig wants to win this race, team orders or not. They go into the tight left hand of the Sachs curver. They're just two corners away now from the checkered flag, and it's still Klaus Ludwig. Reuter has his headlights on, he's desperate to try and get past the man in front. The Opal flags are waving as they come into the final corner, and Ludwig's going to win the race. The checkered flag is waving, and Klaus Ludwig wins from Manuel Reuter. Uwe Altsen is third, and I wonder what Opal boss Peter Floor will have to say about that. We made a mistake in, uh, in uh, 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 getting Manuel the, up the maximum amount of points, but that was unfortunately a mistake because uh, the driver Ludwig didn't obey whatever we told him but anyway victory is victory <laughs> so Schneider has lost the championship lead but his mechanics are working to get his Mercedes ready for race two while they do let's catch up on the deciding rounds of the Formula 3000 championship the penultimate race was at Mugello the championship battle was between Sweden's Kenny Brack and Jörg Muller of Germany but from pole position Ricardo Zonta of Brazil took the lead Zonta was challenged into the first corner by number one, Brack. There was contact between them, and as he recovered from that, Brack lost second place to the charging York Muller. So the battle for second place became the battle for the championship. Zonta moved away into the lead.
the Danish driver Tom Christensen had a wild moment on the grass, but he kept it all together and got back onto the track. He wasn't the only one in trouble. Fabrizio Gollin spun off and nearly took Thomas Biaggi with him. As they got in among the back markers in the race for the chequered flag, Jörg Muller so nearly caught Sonter at the line. But the young Brazilian had scored his second win of the year. And as they came to the final round at Hockenheim, Muller now had a three-point lead in the championship over Kenny Brack. So this race was all about the battle between the two of them, side by side on the front row. As the lights went green, they rushed together down to the first corner. Jörg Muller eased ahead in the white car, but Kenny Brack had the inside line and took the lead. As they came down to Hockenheim's first chicane, Muller tried on the outside under braking, but it didn't come off. Behind them, Ricardo Zonta collided with Jean-Philippe Belloc. Lord Muller was still trying everything in the book to get by Kenny Brack. Whoever won this race between them was going to end up the Formula 3000 champion. But Kenny Brack was hanging on. Then, as they came onto the straight on the run down to the stadium at up to 175 miles an hour, Muller used the slipstream of Brack's car to suck him close behind him, then darted out of the slipstream, got alongside, had the outside line for the corner, and took the lead. The German crowd cheered him to the echo. And Ricardo Santa had another tag, this time with Argentina's Esteban Tuero. Meanwhile, Kenny Brack fought back, and now came the incident that was to decide the Formula 3000 championship. <laughs> Muller's race was run, but Brack regained the track and drove on, still in the lead. Let's see it again. Brack in number one is alongside Muller and forces him towards the verge. Inevitably, they collide. Muller's wheels become entangled in Brack's, and as his car cartwheels, his back wheel just misses Brack's head. But Brack drives determinedly on. Well, the race stewards weren't happy, and they black flagged Brack. The black flag says, come into the pits at once. But Brack ignored the flag. On the right, Muller. He's unhurt, but he's not happy. At the end of the race, Brack was shown the black flag again, not the chequered flag. And victory was given to second man home, Christoph Tanzo, his first ever Formula 3000 victory, ahead of Marcos Gueros and Oliver Tichy. Brack walked in to face the organizers' wrath, and the title was given to Jorg Muller. Uh, I did a fair overtaking manu maneuver to him, but what he did to me was, was not really fair. I mean, he pushed me to the grass on the straight, and then we were be beside each other, you know, and I was in the gravel, and, you know, we braked uh, beside, beside each other, and I was just passing uh, passenger in my car. A controversial end to the F3000 Championship. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with the second ITC race from Hockenheim. Welcome back to Hockenheim for race two. That's JJ Leto in the pit lane. He's had problems with his Opal. He's going to have to start this second race from the pit lane, but the rest of the field are on the circuit now on their rolling lap behind the pace car. At the front, of course, it's the race one winner, Klaus Ludwig, with Manuel Reuter alongside him in the black Opal. Reuter, of course, the championship leader once more after his second place in race one. They come onto the start-finish line, the lights go green, the race is on, and Ludwig is on the inside, but Reuter is absolutely alongside him. And as they go into that first corner, those two Opals are absolutely side by side, and off goes Uwe Altsen. Altsen in the bank and out of the race, I would think. But at the front, it's Reuter, who has snuck ahead of Klaus Ludwig. Opals one and two, therefore. Alphas three and four. Tarkini is third ahead of Nanini. It's Van Omen's Mercedes, which is in fifth place. And there is Uwe Altsen getting out of his somewhat damaged Opal as 
at the front. It's side by side in the chicane between Van Ommel and Nannini. They're nerfing each other's wings, but they seem to have come through quite safely. Once more, then, we see the start with Altson, I think, touched by somebody, possibly Tarkini, because he suddenly turned sharp left, went off the track and into the bank and out of the race. And Reuter and Ludwig making a break for two Opals at the front, easing away from the pursuing alphas of Tarkini and Nanini, and Van Oman is there too with his Mercedes but it's Reuter, the championship leader, who is at the front this time, and he seems determined not to let Ludwig get past him this time. Into the second chicane, Van Ommen is third. Tarkini is fourth, the rest of them muscling through. Nanini in fifth place, Bert Maylander is sixth, ahead of Christian Danner's Alpha, which is seventh, and as we see them coming storming down the long straight, battles going on all the way down the circuit. They're side by side with Bartels going past Dalmas, side by side as they go. Oh, very close under braking. Who's going to have the line? Bartels on the inside of the Orange Alpha just gets ahead there. Meanwhile, Bert Schneider, after his problems earlier, is well down, stuck in the traffic, and he won't be happy that Manuel Reuter, the man with whom he's battling for the championship lead, is leading this race while he is still carving his way up. And look how close these cars get under braking as they come round the long right-hander that leads them on to the start-finish straight. Still all running very close indeed, but Reuter, Ludwig, Van Ommen, Nanini, Tarkini and Maylander all going through and on with a little bit of dust as somebody ran wide. Reuter and Ludwig leading the field. Van Ommen a couple of seconds down in third place, but doing an excellent job, while the silver arrows of Schneider and Dario Franchitti, the leaders of the Mercedes-Benz effort, are well down in the traffic. And then the Alphas battling away with Nanini just ahead of Tarkini. Then the second Mercedes is Maylander, so it's left to the second string Mercedes to fly the three-pointed star here at Hockenheim. Christian Danner, Fisichella, seventh and eighth, just ahead of Schneider. Schneider has got up to ninth place now ahead of Ellen Law, the very rapid girl driver in her Mercedes, and once more, that leading Opal pair fight on, but I have a suspicion that Reuters going to hang on to that lead because of the championship point. Oh, and a collision between Jason Watt and Nicola Larini. Jason Watt came flying up the inside in the braking area for the chicane and smote Larini well and truly amidships, and I think we're going to see it again. Watch the white alpha of Jason Watt. The red and white alpha is Nicola Larini, and Watt comes from miles behind, it seems. Leaves his braking very late. There's a lot of weaving around in front of him, but somehow Watt comes storming up the inside from a long way back. There he is. He's not really got the brakes on yet. Clouts Nicola Larini in the side and amazingly gets away with it. So while Nicola Larini goes into retirement, thump, there he goes, kicked into touch. Over the inside of the chicane, collecting a bollard, goes Jason Watt and carries on with the race. And the Alpha team can't really believe it. There's another Alpha off. That's Michael Bartels in the orange car. He is well and truly in the gravel, so Michael Bartels out as well. And we've really got the battles developing now between the first two Opals, Reuter and Ludwig, and the third and fourth cars, Van Ommen, there he is in the black Mercedes, and Alessandro Nanini, who's sitting in his boot. We're seeing again how Michael Bartels disappeared sideways and backwards out of the race. So that's Bartels off. And there, number one, is Bernd Schneider, and Schneider's in ninth place. The battle in front is for sixth. Bert Maylander side by side with Fisichella, and Fisichella goes past Maylander. Christian Danner in the other red alpha is there as well, and Bert Schneider is reeling them all in. And here's the battle for third. Van Ommen in the black Mercedes. Alessandra Nanini tucked in behind, looking for a way by. The Mercedes is quick down the straights, but that four-wheel drive alpha is very snappy through the chicanes. He's on the inside line. He's going to try and leave his braking later. And here's another battle. Stuck, Law, Franchitti in the middle. There's Dario Franchitti in the number two Mercedes, fighting through the traffic. Kurt Tim is there in the black Mercedes, and they've got Stefano Modena's Alpha and JJ Leite's Opal all tucked in with them, weaving and fighting away, and you couldn't put a cigarette paper between any of them.
and Bernd Schneider in the silver Mercedes at the front of that group seems to be slowing. He's about to be swallowed up by the rest of them. I think Bernd Schneider is in trouble. Yes, they're all going past him. Bernd Schneider has a mechanical problem and that could be very significant indeed for the championship. Meanwhile, Hans Stuck is alongside Ellen Lohr for ninth place and he leaves his braking later. Stuck in the Opel goes ahead of Ellen Lohr in the 10th place now, Mercedes. And 11th behind them, the silver Mercedes, is Dario Franchitti trying to get into the top 10 after his tardy start. Bernd Schneider nursing his car back to the pits, but meanwhile, Franchitti is alongside Ellen Lohr now as they come into the stadium, braking for that right-hander and Ellen Law lets Franchitti go. Franchitti now 10th, Hans Stuck 9th, Ellen Law 11th, and the battle behind them is led by JJ Leto in the other Keki Rosberg car, still fighting going on all the way down the field in this final European race of the ITC season, with Dario Franchitti now trying to close on Hans Schuck for ninth place, and into the pits comes Jason Watt. It hasn't been a happy race for him. He carried on after that collision with Nicola Lorini, but he's now back in the pits. And meanwhile, there into the pits now is Bernd Schneider. And he must feel very sad indeed. He started today in the lead in the ITC Championship. And Reuter has had a second place already. He is leading this final European race now. And that doesn't look good for Schneider's championship hopes. And here's Fisichella and Magnussen. Fisichella and Magnussen side by side into the chicane. Magnussen in the white Mercedes fighting to get past Giancarlo Fisichella in the red Alfa Romeo. And Magnussen is blocked out by Fisichella. Both of these drivers have Formula One experience. Uh, Magnussen, of course, with McLaren, and Fisichella has had several good drives for Minardi, and now Magnussen tries the outside on the braking for that chicane. Fisichella slams the door in his face and weaves through the chicane now. You can see the sparks coming underneath the cars as they bottom under braking. York Van Ollen ahead of them in third place, and so now the Opal flags are waving because this is the final lap, and Manuel Reuter coming into the Sachs Kerber, that tight left-hander in the stadium for the final time, followed by Klaus Ludwig. It's going to be an Opal 1-2. This victory by Manuel Reuter is going to propel him back to the top of the ITC championship table. The Opal flags wave to greet the Opal pair as Manuel Reuter comes towards the chequered flag. Manuel Reuter wins. Klaus Ludwig is second. Jörg van Ommen is third for Mercedes and Jan Magnussen makes it to fourth place ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella. Dario Franchitti is seventh, but a great day for Manuel Reuter. There were two fantastic races for me. I think everybody saw my car was very quick. We did a very perfect race setup. Tire choice was perfect and so I'm back in the lead, that's the important thing. Yes, he now has a 33-point lead over Schneider with two events to go. And Dario Franchitti is still in with a chance in third place. Well, from Germany, the ITC teams fly all the way to Sao Paulo in Brazil as the championship approaches its climax. We'll see you there.